my presentations today is about aesthetic analysis of eyebrow and smile. The presentation was based on three articles which are listed here. The aesthetic importance of the eyebrow has been highlighted for centuries. In this review paper, I do eyebrows were investigated. In particular, the upper touch of the face including the eyebrows and the eyelids vary among races, ages and genders. In facial impression and beauty, the upper touch of the face is considered to be of primary importance. The brow is known as the master light of the face, used as a reference for all other angles and control of the face. Eyebrow aesthetics are influenced by various factors, including age, sex, culture, ethnicity, and current fashion trends. Further, the surrounding periorbital feature also affect appearance. In addition, there is great variety in the shape and position of the eyebrows. Therefore, it is difficult to define ideal criteria for all faces. According to Westmore, the modern acceptable concept of the ideal brow was described as the medical brow should begin on the same vertical planes at the lateral extent of the ailer and the inner canthus. The medical brow and slaterary as an orange line drawn from the most lateral point of the ailer through the lateral canthus. The medial and lateral ends of the brow lie approximately at the same horizontal level. The apex lie on the vertical line directly above the lateral limbus. However, the research in the study by Baker suggested that there may not be one ideal brow for every facial shape. Although the Westmore ideal appears to work well for many facial shapes, there may be an alternative ideal for square and long faces. In long faces, a lateral brow may be more suitable. In contrast, a little curvature may help to soften the angle of a square face. Maskini reported that the distance from the mid pupil to the upper edge of the eyebrow should be at least 2.5 cm and the forehead height averages 5 cm in female and 6 cm in male. Gunter found that it is difficult to evaluate ID frag without considering other periorbital features. They formulated the following criteria for adjustive eyes. The intercanter area should be tilted slightly upward from medial to lateral. The upper lip should cover the iris approximately 1 to 2 mm. The medial portions of the upper lip margin should be in a more vertical plane than the lateral upper lip margins. The upper lid free suits parallel the clash line and divide the upper lid into an upper two thirds and a lower one thirds. The medial extensions of the supratarsal upper kinsfold should not exist the inner extent of a medial canthus. The lateral extension of the supratarsal upper skinfold should not extend beyond the lateral orbital brim. There should be a minimal, if any, clever show between the lower lid and iris. The lower lid margin should bow gently from medial to lateral, with the lowest point between the pupil and the lateral limbus. However, prolonged hyperactivity of the upper facial maculature produces three deformities in the forehead brow complex, chamber forehead wrinkling brow foxes and labella wrinkling. Brow lift techniques are the surgery which are overrated to restore a brow positions. Numerous brow lift techniques have been defined including the coronal lift, the endoscopic brow lift, the reticular lift, the mid forehead lift, the direct brow lift, and the internal brow lift. For a sub aesthetically pleasing results, it is important to avoid over corrections of the brow positions and excessive elevations of the medical brow. 
over elevation creates an unnatural surprise and an intelligent look. This is the most common surgical mistake in vow lifting. A study by No so that lateral vow elevation led to an increased perception of surprise. Medial vow elevations was perceived as a facial expression, and total eyebrow elevations were perceived as a set entire facial impressions. For conclusions, brow shape and position vary among ages, phrases, and gender. Individual processes and expectations are so different from person to person. It's impossible to define an ideal eyebrow that is suitable for every face, and one must consider rigorously this right criteria and other periorbital judges when performing a brow surgery. There is a lack of agreement in the literature concerning the relative importance of the mouth and teeth in overall facial adjustive. The objective of this study was to determine whether dental and facial adjustiveness alter viewer visual attention in terms of which area of the face, eyes, nose, mouth, chin, ears, or other by using eye tracking. An eye tracker consists of camera, rochester, and algorithms. The rochester reads a pattern of near infrared light on the eyes. The cameras tell high resolution images of the user's eyes and the pattern. Machine learning, image processing, and mathematical algorithms are used to determine the eye's position and gaze point. 26 young adults with no professional dental abilities rated 199 smiling facial images with the lips together so we no it. They rated the images as unattractive, average attractiveness or attractive, one, two, or three respectively with their further definitions. The image would then source based on mean attractiveness rating into roofs based on attractiveness. Each of the dental from the images will assign an aesthetic component of index of orthodontic treatment need grade, ACIOTN, by a researcher. For this study, images of ACIOTN pre 1, no treatment need, 7, or the light treatment need, and 10 definite treatment need were paired with the three levels of facial attractiveness. Additionally, the three phase of attractiveness level were compiled with a repair unilateral cleft lift and this which were ACOITM31 to eliminate the variable of dental attractiveness and this created another level of facial attractiveness. These are examples of composite images malocclusions and facial attractiveness created for this study. Note that the images were not mosaic during the study. Area of interest of the face defined where the viewer gaze both for 18 milliseconds or longer when viewing its image in essence creating a map of the face. The area were forehead, hair, eyebrows, eyes, nose, mouth, cleft, cheek, chin, and ears. A mouse gap would lead between interest area to ensure accuracy of the fixations. If a fixation plant is on a gap between area of interest, it would record it as other. After obtaining consent, the viewer will position in the eye tracker and calibrate this. But the images were shown, data were being collected concerning what area of the face they look at what area of the face they view most frequently, and what area of the face they view for the longest total duration. Observer reliability range from 0.58 to 0.92 inter-class correlation coefficients both were less than 0.07 integrator for the chin, which were eliminated from the study. Likewise, 
reliability for the area for first fixation was kappa less than 0.1 for both integrator and integrator reliabilities. The area of first fixation was also removed from the data analysis. Repeated measure ANOVA show a significant effect for the level of facial adjustedness by dental adjustedness by area of the face. This was seen for both the total duration of fixations and fixation density. For both variables, the total duration of fixations and fixation density, the eyes overwhelmingly were the most salient. Whether for total durations or fixation density, the eyes were viewed more than the mouth, which was viewed more than the nose. However, this is not always the case. A study by Hughes in 2013 with black and white viewer reported that the eyes and nose were viewed more frequently than the mouth by white and black viewer respectively. As the dental attractiveness decrease, we saw a tension for total duration and fixation density decrease for the eyes and increase on the mouth, sometimes approaching that of the eyes. The highest duration and fixation on the mouth were on way for the most densely unattractive occlusions, followed by brace 7, the cleft, and the most densely attractive images. IoT and Brain 1 received the glaze duration and fixations, although IoT and Brain 10 only received the most attention and Brain 1 the least attention regardless of the facial attractiveness. IoT and Brain 7 froze to the same duration and fixation level of Brain 10 as facial attractiveness increase. This happened at Brain 7 for the attractive faces, but at Brain 10 for the unattractive faces. These results support the privacy of the eyes in viewers' attention when they are looking at faces, but indicate that the mouth have equal impact when the dental attractiveness decreases. Importantly, the result also show the significant interactions between area of the face and the level of facial and dental attractiveness. In this study, a poorly repaired unilateral cleft lift was added as an extreme oral feature to test the salience of an oral feature. The glaze dental attractive free IoT and Brain 10 received more visual attention than did the cleft. However, different would not statistically significant for the unattractive and attractive faces. In addition, in this study, the cleft did not affect the nose like other study. Repeated measure ANOVA also show a significant effect between viewer sets and area of the face for both fixation density and total duration of fixation. Female viewer have a significant rate of fixation density and total duration of fixation on the area of the eyes and significantly less total duration of fixation on the mouth and nose than did the male viewers. For conclusions, eye tracking is a reliable and attractive method for evaluating the visual attention based to facial feature. The eyes were the most salient facial feature followed by the mouth for both durations and fixations. The prey of dental attractiveness affected the way viewers look at faces, and the background level of facial attractiveness was an independent factor modifying the behavior. An insulated no natural informant repair unilateral cleft with attractive teeth have less effect on the viewer visual attention than the more densely unattractive mouth without cleft. The size of the viewer affected the attention given to different facial area for duration and fixation. The inclusion of three-dimensional facial contour and dynamic inflation recording on faster or smart attires is essential for facial beauty improvement. 
However, the kinematic feature of the facial smile contour and contribution from the soft tissue and underlying hard tissues were untreated. This study was operated to provide clues and hints for the treatment planning in clinics of orthodontists, orthopedic, or lattice surgery when screening the determinations area and qualifying the modification volumes. Cheekbone contour is anteriorly facing prolite that stores just anterior to ear is tending forward with cheekbone point CP that is tending anterior inferiorly ending as muscular point M at P. Attracing to ailer space of nose. From the muscular point, another dominant line in the face called the nasolabial fold begin and curl downward and bilaterally to be lost finally below and lateral to the oral commissure. And the combinations of the two facial lines were termed as smile contour or cheekbone nasal lateral contour. In this study, the relationship between this contour in space and the smile aesthetic was examined by three dimensionally facial motion capture. A total of 80 students at Song Yasen University with no reverse orthodontic treatment were improved for the study. Three soft tissue landmark grids were definable and used to define the terminal and turning point of the curl were cheekbone point, the muscular point, and the mandible point. They were positioned firstly to assist in curl growing. Using the landmark, the cheekbone muscular nasolabial curl consisting of the cheekbone contour and nasolabial folds were drawn bilaterally on each subject. The three-dimensional movement data of landmark was captured during smiling and laughing for evaluations of movement characteristics and specific landmark training mean maximum amplitude with either average distance of the landmark of two aspects between facial impressions and steady state was calculated to characterize the dynamic feature and stability of the landmark. The length of the tooth curl was raw. Therefore, specific landmark during expressive movement on the curl was three now. For three-dimensional reconstruction and analysis, the three-dimensional coordinates of the soft tissue points and the facial hard tissue points were important for the position of corresponding hard tissue points by the homeomorphic mapping principle. For statistical analysis, canonical correlation analysis was used to calculate the correlation between soft tissue points and corresponding hard tissue points. Square canonical correlation represents the contribution of hard tissue position to the soft tissue counterpart. During SMILE Figure A to D, the length of the tooth curl of both sides have double big, especially on the right side. The location of the first big is inconspicuous on the left side, but apparent on the right side between R5 and R6. The second big is prominent bilateral between L9, R9, and L10, R10, which correspond to the corner of the mouth. For stable points, both the origins and terminus of the contour of curves display small attitude during smiling. But for the laughing positions, bigger E to H, the differences between the length of the two curves of the two sides was more evident. So at the one big front on the left side and two big front on the right. However, the changing through along the bilateral fittest curve is similar to the smile condition. Similar to the tender skate, the shape of the length of the two curl so here was not symmetric. The movement of the two a specific point and the means of the two were both larger on the bright compared to the left side. This may be because the left hemisphere of the brain controls positive emotion, resulting in more instant impressions of positive emotions, such as smiling and laughing on the bright side of the face. Therefore, extra oral photographs should be collected is bilaterally if dynamic smile analysis will be conducted to formulate a plan for aesthetic treatment. The corresponding points on the surface of the heart tissue were consequently obtained by homeomorphic mapping method. The points 
L1, comma, L2, comma, R1, comma, and R2, comma, fell on the zygomatic arch area. L2, comma, R2, comma, and L3, comma, R2, comma, mouth to cheekbone point and muscular point respectively. R3, comma, was at the upper lateral of muscular point. L4, comma, R4, comma, mouth to the corner of the mouth with R4, comma, slightly downward. Finally, L5, comma, R5, comma, mouth to the manual point. On the basis of canonical correlation analysis, there was a significant correlation between the soft tissue and hard tissue position except as L5, comma, R5, comma. The hard tissue as L2, comma, R2, comma, and L3, comma were strongly correlated to the soft tissue. The position of the soft tissue area around the mouse corner, L4, comma, R4, comma, displayed less aptitude in motion, but was closely related to the underlying hard tissue in the steady state. The unstable point was shown the with relationship between the smile and laughing motions, while the stable points show the opposite. Therefore, while evaluating the dynamic characteristics with the status picture, it would be better to evaluate the unstable area under the smile posture. In addition, the soft tissue configurations of the transitions is very able as the hard tissue portion changes. Many both points in the chance of cheek, lower lip, and chain, where the thickness of soft tissue is quite variable. Although the underlying heart tissue can be reshaped by surgery, the exact position of the corresponding heart tissue points of the manual points is difficult to alter. For conclusions, the mouse corner regions with the more mobile area characterize in smart expressions, while the other area remain relatively stable. The perioral area should be evaluated dynamically, while the static assessment outcome of other part of the smart control contribute positively to their dynamic aesthetic. Morphologies of the zygomatic area and the superior part of the nasal labial crease were determined clearly by the keratons impressed, implying the latter can be altered by orthopedic or orthodontic corrections and the former better improved by the cosmetic procedure to improve the beauty of smile. Thank you for listening.